Hello my beautiful friends. I hope you're having an amazing day. Today I am so excited to talk to you because I'm going to be talking to you about something that I've really come to learn. And learn as in I know sometimes we hear about certain concepts but to have a concept download so much into your inner knowing so that you become completely liberated from your ego in certain aspects can be very powerful and that's what I'm going to be speaking about with you today is how I've really come to terms that it could be okay or would be okay, most definitely would be okay if I remain single for the rest of my life. So let's get started. All right, so I want to talk to you guys about this today because it's been something that I've really come to learn, understand, accept. And with doing that in this past month, I would say the month of March, this was a very predominant theme or lesson for me. Upon it, it just accepting that, learning it, and having it download into my being to the extent that I'm speaking to you about, I've really become liberated from my ego in the way that, uh, you know, trusting that I'm on the right path, trusting that it will be okay, uh, the future will be okay, regardless of whether or not I'm single forever. So it's quite an interesting topic, and I know that I've been quite open and honest with you guys more recently about my journey, about my inner narratives, my blocks when it comes to relationships, my fears, things like that. But through the month of March, I, um, I reread the Bhagavad Gita, and I read Autobiography of a Yogi, and I found these two books specifically to be so empowering in connecting with your soul and your own unique journey here on planet Earth. Both of these books are very magical and I highly recommend them and I want to tell you about what I took from these books this past month. I'm sure these are books that I'm most definitely going to revisit over time and time and time again, but for me personally, they provided a great learning and acceptance opportunity for myself. So yes, I've been single for quite some time and I've always felt like my ego based on probably the culture, the ways in which I've grown up and, and society is that, you know, you grow up, you get a job, you get married, you have kids, that seems to be the, the norm, right? Society's norm. And I've always felt a little bit like an alien, I'll probably speak to you guys more about that uh, soon. Hint, hint for some spiritual content coming up, some deep dives into the esoteric stuff. But I always felt like because of the way that I grew up like this, because of the way I grew up watching Disney movies, just expecting that one day that's gonna happen for me, one day, one day my Prince Charming's gonna show up, one day, one day, that stuff sits with you and that stuff stays with you. And I've always just felt like I'm walking my own path and I've had beautiful loves cross my path. I've had all different types of like romantic experiences that have been very beautiful for me. But still I always felt like my ego is consistently or had been consistently searching for this one. This one person that I'm supposed to be with and I, or just the fact that I'm supposed to get married. I'm supposed to have kids. Like where is this person? Why hasn't this happened for me yet? I'm 28 years old. Like these questions crossing my mind. While all my friends in the past few years have gotten married, gotten engaged, it seems to be a quite predominant theme for the people in my life, uh, but, but not for me. But naturally those questions have you asking yourself, well, where am I at in this journey and why have I not achieved X, Y, Z yet? Even though in my being, I don't personally feel ready to be married. I mean, I don't even have a boyfriend, so I don't have a relationship or even dating anyone at this time. And so it's quite interesting, the fact that these things have me consistently questioning my path when really inside, I've always just felt like I'm right where I need to be and I don't need to be anywhere else. Upon reading these books specifically, they were reminding me so much to the point where it resonates in my soul that I am on my divine unique path and whatever's meant for me is going to happen for me. It always will happen for me what is meant for me and I found this very trusting and reassuring to a new level. Because of the way that these books are relaying this message, because of the way I found them resonating with me, I trusted that and have 
moved into this new place of trust that maybe I'm not meant to ever get married. Maybe I'm not ever meant to have children. The path that I'm on right now is feeling very ca calling me towards my spirituality, calling me towards building a very strong and powerful foundation in my business. And that has been a theme for quite some time now. And I feel very good on this path. I feel like I'm still learning in love. Yes, I've had dabbled in dating experiences in the last few years and I've always come out learning more things about myself, about other people, and I found that to be great, but I felt more called to be on a spiritual path right now. And reading these books, I was reminded that my soul came here for a specific mission. A few different missions, but I have a life path that has already been chosen by me on a soul level, on a higher self mission, if you will. And within knowing this and just reading this content and having my life unfold the way it has, I was just able to recognize I'm hanging on. The ego is hanging on to a desire that I have no control over. I can continue to work on myself, yes, and hopefully I will attract a romantic partnership into my life one day because that's something that, well, like that's an experience I hope to have one day. But by releasing this e the ego's attachment, and moving into a place of acceptance, I've never felt more empowered and more liberated. I basically accepted, and I already told my parents this while we were on holiday together in Mexico, so I think it's okay to share in a video, but I expressed them. Like, I feel like it's okay that I may never get married. Like, I may never have that experience. I've also accepted the fact that I may not ever have children. Like, I'm actually good either way is what I'm saying is I've come to the conclusion, not just in my mind, because there's something to be said about knowing information, hearing information, and then having it resonate in your soul and your heart. And I just moved into this place of acceptance that with the path I'm on, that I'm building my personal brand, my business, I'm becoming more and more spiritual each day, like really deepening that journey for myself, enriching that journey and coaching people and helping other people move through the awakening process and navigate their lives. That makes me feel so good that if that's the path that my soul's meant to walk, then that's great. And if other people are meant to enter, they're going to enter to be the, the cherry on top of all of that, not to by any means complete me or complete my journey here on earth. I was reminded through these books that my soul came here for specific purposes and the ego is the one with the desires. The ego is the one with the wants, the needs, the, the desire for symbols. And it doesn't resonate with me. I trust that whatever feels good for me is what I'm meant to do here and what I'm doing right now in my life feels really good, feels better than ever. And so by finally detaching to this last little bit of the ego, really wanting or searching for this one person, I've moved more onto this space of trust. That I trust that, like I said, if that's meant for me in my path, it's going to happen. And I did see a Vedic astrologer because these books very much inspired me to seek out a Vedic astrologer to read, to read uh, my natal chart for me. And it says, he said it's very strong in the planets, in the, in the alignment of the stars, if you will, that I will be getting married. So I'm going to share my Vedic reading, a little bit of it anyways, with you guys and what that experience was like for me in a future video. But like I said, today I wanted to talk to you about how I accepted that maybe that's not meant for me, that my soul came here to do specific things and what the ego wants and what the soul wants, we know are very different things and the, one, the path that feels good is the soul's path. So I wanted to remind you guys about this. It's just a lesson that I'm continually always learning, but it really resonated deeply upon reading these books again and exploring, um, you know, what that means for my soul and what that could mean for my soul and down the road if there is a recognition in my natal chart that i quite possibly may have a child one day or children uh, but what i felt very empowered by was that the path that i'm building for myself the the business and the foundation and everything that i'm creating for myself would give me the opportunity in the future to adopt a child 
and be financially stable in that scenario. If there never was a romantic partner for me in the future, I could still have a child if I wanted to. I could still raise a human being and I would be just fine. The ego seems to think on some level that if we don't have what we want or what it's desiring, let's say marriage or a family, like a partnership in that way or XYZ symbols, that certain car, that house, the ego has this grasping emotion, like it thinks we might die if we don't have these things. Where I can tell you that I'm so comfortable, especially I've been quarantined in my apartment for almost two weeks, not allowed to go outside and, and that's fine because I actually love hanging out with myself every day. I have so much fun. Like I don't need anyone else. I don't need anything else. I actually am just so, I've never been more content or more liberated in my entire life. And yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I don't let me know if this message resonated at all, but for me, I just feel like it's been something that I've been uh, learning for many years, but it finally just kind of came around. Like I, I can control in the sense that I can manifest certain things, but I can't control what my soul came here to do and what feels good to me. So yeah. Anyways guys, that's the video I want to share with you today and I'd love to know what your comments are on this and I'm really excited to share my Vedic reading with you all because it was a very cool experience. So I'll talk to you very soon. Love you. Bye.